Hello guys, Colin here, and today I'm tackling your tatas, the questions that at this stage you are too afraid to ask. You might think you've got a good idea of what all the controls on your amplifier do, but there is one control that still offers a little confusion for users, and that is the presence control. These have been around for a long time. Fender first introduced a presence control on their amplifiers as far back as the 50s, so while we've had all the time in the world to become familiar with what they do, not every amplifier features a presence control. In fact, it's pretty easy to go through several amps and never encounter one, and as they're almost only ever found on expensive valve amplifiers, their comparative rarity leaves a lot of players unsure as to what they do. The presence control affects the present frequencies, the upper mids and trebles where a sound becomes more lively, stands out and is more, well, present. But it doesn't behave like a conventional EQ control. Looking at their topology, an amplifier can be divided into two main sections, the preamp and the power amp. The preamp is the main tone shaping section of your amplifier and it's the first stop for your guitar signal when it enters the amp. The preamp is where most of the amplifier's controls live gain, channel volume, and your EQ controls, bass, mids, and treble. Typically, the preamp forms the tonal identity of the amp, allows for some EQ adjustability, and then passes that all off to the power amp. The power amp's job is to make whatever it gets sent from the preamp louder. It's the part of the amplifier where all the power is, hence the name, and usually the only control that lives here is the master volume. Unless, of course, your amplifier has a presence control. Presence is unique in that it is tone shaping within the power amp, affecting the upper mids and treble frequencies after you've done your EQ crafting in the preamp. This gives it a much wider influence over the general tonality of the amplifier rather than the more specific tone shaping the EQ controls do in the preamp. Presence also functions entirely differently to a conventional EQ control. To get technical, a presence control is really a high frequency shelving boost. It's actively boosting the high frequency gain, unlike most amp EQ controls which are entirely subtractive in nature. The presence control is most commonly placed within the negative feedback loop of the power amp. Negative feedback loops are, in short, a way to tame distortions and retain a cleaner operation from the power amp. They do this by sending a small amount of the output signal back into the power amp input. The feedback signal is out of phase with the initial input, while also being laden with high frequency harmonic distortions, which are a natural result of power amplification. The combination of the input signal and feedback signal reduces the resultant signal gain while also imparting the phase reverse distortion onto it. When this modified signal goes through the power amp, the out of phase distortion cancels with the distortions inherent in the amplification process, resulting in a much purer power amp signal. By adding a high frequency shelving filter to the feedback loop, essentially some capacitors connected to ground controlled by a potentiometer which we label presence, we can bleed out high frequencies from the feedback loop. This means that any high frequency content going through the amplification stage will be unaffected by the feedback loop, resulting in more high frequency gain at the cost of more high frequency distortion. So turning up the presence control means that more and more of the high frequencies will get through the power amp firstly without being attenuated, hence they will become louder than the other frequencies left untouched by the presence control, and secondly without a reduction in harmonic distortion. Distortion and high frequencies are very closely related, remind me to talk about Fourier transforms sometime, but the TLDR is that distortion is made from very high frequency content, so if you want a detailed, biting distortion sound, high frequencies are exceptionally important. So removing the high frequencies from the feedback loop not only makes the amplifier sound brighter in general, but it changes the texture of the distortion, allowing for the high frequencies to distort more than the low frequencies. This adds a lot more complexity and detail to distorted sounds and can really take a high gain sound from sounding dark and grungy to biting and focused. To demonstrate this effect, I have the Engel Savage Mark II, which features two presence controls so you can switch between different settings. This is a fantastic idea for a multi-channel amp like this, as you'll probably want lower presence settings for cleaner sounds and higher presence settings for distortion.
Notice particularly on this classic rock sound that higher presence settings just sound too bitey for this kind of tone, but lower presence settings sound right on for that rock sound we're going for. In contrast, this high gain tone just sounds so much more detailed, aggressive and really snaps with the high presence settings, but with lower presence settings it almost feels like we've dropped the distortion level. <laughs> If that was all just a wee bit too complicated and all you were looking for was a simple operational explanation, then here goes. The presence control adjusts the overall high frequency content of the amplifier. It doesn't behave like a treble EQ control which shapes the preamp sound over a specific band. Think of it more like a general brightness control that comes into effect after the EQ section. It adds high frequencies and more detailed distortion to the upper mids and trebles without affecting the lower mids and bass. This is very useful for restructuring the texture of your amplifier's sound on a global level. On a clean sound, more presence will make the amp sound generally brighter. On a distortion sound, more presence will brighten while also adding texture to the distortion, which is really great if you want to add a bit more bite to your high gain sound. If you have any questions of your own that you are too afraid to ask, please do leave them in the comments section and perhaps they'll become the topic of a future Tata video. It's never too late to learn. And if you've liked this video and you want to see more content from me then you can hit that subscribe button. My Patreon's also there for exclusive secret stuff, t-shirts are also available and there's other videos that you might not have seen. But that's all for now guys, keep it loud and I'll see you later. CS Guitars PRESENT!